Hey everyone, before we get into today's video, I just wanted to let you know we are giving away a copy of Super Mario Odyssey. There is a link in the description below. And yeah, go there, enter, and good luck. Now, I was looking for something to uh, make a video about today, and I just couldn't help but talk about the stock situation that Nintendo seems to consistently have issues with uh, when it comes to their systems. And that's this kind of gets exasperated by Doug Bowser. So Business Insider had a chance to ask Doug Bowser. So he's the VP of Sales and Marketing at Nintendo of America. So he obviously knows what he's talking about when it comes to the sales aspect. And we're just going to read verbatim what it says in this article. It says, We try to do the best we can with forecasting and anticipating demand and to put a plan in place, said Bowser who was in New York for the 2017 Nintendo World Championships, a fan event that pits players against each other in a variety of companies' games. But he added, if you see a steep ramp up in demand, it takes time to catch up, and it's not something that can be solved quickly. When you think about procurement of parts, procurement of manufacturing facilities, getting production ramped up, it takes time to respond. Supply issues have been a repeated and persistent problem for Nintendo in 2017. The $60 NES Classic was nearly impossible to find before it was discontinued in April, and Nintendo is actually bringing that console back next year, uh, a direct response to overwhelming demand. Meanwhile, the Switch has been short on supply until recently. It is still not as simple as walking in your local Best Buy and picking one up. For many people, it is in my area, uh, although Bowser said the situation should improve. You'll see a lot stronger supply as we float through the remainder of our fiscal year. Bowser had a similar hopeful message for fans trying to buy an SNES Classic. We're really focused on trying to get as much SNES to the market as possible. You'll see a much stronger flow of product than you did with the NES. Lesson learned from the past. So he's really reiterating when it comes to the SNES that uh, Nintendo did learn, and he's kind of saying what Reggie has said all along. There was going to be more units available at launch than there was for NES Classic. That's already been proven true, and that they're going to have more stock of it available throughout this holiday than they did of the NES Classic. Again, that's yet to be proven. Probably likely true, but you know we'll, we'll see. Nintendo has sometimes said they promise to do something and then ends up not following through. And they obviously are getting a lot better about catching up the Switch demand. Uh, it is not that difficult to buy a Switch. It, it's been widely available on Amazon now for over a week. Uh, so if you just want to buy it online, it's pretty easy to get one. Uh, if you want to walk into your local store and pick one up, most local stores probably have Switch in stock or will soon. Uh, I know all of my local GameStops have had it in stock this week. Uh, and still to this day, and my local Best Buy, Walmart doesn't necessarily have the base model always in stock. They, they seem to always have at least one of the bundled versions, the Splatoon 2 bundle specifically. But yeah, it's it's not that it, Nintendo's gotten better with stock when it comes to Switch, and hopefully it'll get better when it comes to the SNES Classic. But what's interesting, and, and the thing I want to point out, and it's something we've talked about before, um, is that he talks about they try to do the best when they're forecasting and anticipating demand. And Nintendo, that seems to be, I think, their biggest downfall. Why they continually have problems with things like the NES, the SNES Classic, uh, why they had issues with the Switch, why they had issues with things like Amiibo. If you just think about that in the past, if you think about how many Breath of the Wild Amiibo have not been restocked yet, and we're about to get more Breath of the Wild Amiibo coming out. I mean, they had to do a special announcement that they were bringing back the 30th anniversary Amiibo for Zelda, when it's like, uh, that that they should have never went away in the first place, right? Uh, so, Nintendo has a big issue when it comes to forecasting, and I think, I, I don't know if this is blaming Nintendo of America, or if it's blaming Nintendo of Japan, or I think it's just actually a company-wide issue. Nintendo, uh, while they try to do their best, they really suck when it comes to forecasting and anticipating demand. And sometimes that's understandable. Uh, I give them a pass with the Wii because there's no way they could have known the Wii was going to blow up like it did. Uh, Nintendo uh, was not being very hyped about it. The me games media didn't seem that excited by the prospects of the Wii. And no one really knew that that was going to blow up. Same with the DS. The, the games media was really down on the DS. And to be fair, Nintendo DS didn't necessarily come out of the gate firing as a system that was going to eventually move 150 million units. It kind of slowly got up to that point. And really, by the holiday season and the, the following year, it, it started really catching on uh, as titles like Nintendogs and Brain Age and all that stuff started 
started blowing up on the platform, just like Wii Sports for the Wii. So there are times that I give Nintendo an excuse. Uh, I don't know that they have so much as one today. Uh, you could argue they didn't know the Switch was going to blow up, but unlike the Wii and the DS, like there was a lot of positive hype around Switch. A lot of positivity. Uh, they saw the pre-order numbers, right? They knew what the pre-order number, numbers were. Now, obviously, just because you know what the pre-order numbers are doesn't mean uh, when you're trying to ramp up production, you could suddenly get more units out there at launch. But, you know, we had a report recently where Nintendo is getting like 2 million units out now. Uh, per month in manufacturing, and I understood it may have taken them a while to get up to that, uh, and that you're not obviously going to make 2 million units per month before launch. I mean, you don't want to have 10 million units ready at launch um, after you just came off a platform that only sold 13 million. You might never sell those 10 million units. Now, in hindsight, it feels like maybe they should have had 10 million ready, but uh, I don't expect that kind of forecasting. But, yeah, Nintendo just has a problem with forecasting and anticipating demand. And you know, when it comes to ramping up production, you know, a lot of people think, oh, just make more and it's really easy. Uh, it's not. You know, he mentioned issues that you have when you ramp up production. You know, you have the procurement of parts, which, again, that deals with the fact that there's a shortage on certain parts. So, like, you're when you're competing in the marketplace to get things like NAND flash or LCD screens and all this stuff, and you're in this competition for these parts with other companies that are doing it, uh, it, it could take a while to procure enough of those parts to ramp production up to a significant mar uh, a significant margin, I guess, to meet demand. Uh, and then he says, you know, there's also an issue where you got the procurement of manufacturing facilities. So sometimes, just because they have people making it, they might need more companies getting involved. And we've heard now that more companies are contacting Nintendo wanting to put together Switches for them. Right now, over 50% of Nintendo Switches are made by Foxconn, but it would be really nice if they could expand that and get more manufacturers involved. And again, that, that takes time, it takes money, it takes... Uh, negotiations and contracts getting signed, especially if they want to keep the price of the Switch where it is and, and, and not necessarily have to change it based on who's making it. Uh, and then, obviously, all of that is how you get production ramped up. And, yeah, you know, if you misfire on your forecasting, you misfire on your anticipation of the demand for a product, it's going to take even longer to catch up because you weren't prepared to ramp up. Now, you know, Nintendo said they were prepared to ramp up production of Switch if demand was high. Uh, but I don't think they were prepared to ramp it up this high. I think they were ready to make like a million units per month or something, uh, but they were not prepared for the high demand of Switch. And we, we've seen this issue with, with NES Classic, you know, maybe with the SNES Classic, at least at launch. Uh, we've seen this issue in general. So it's, it's definitely a, a concern, but it's interesting to hear that Nintendo kind of admits that, hey, look, uh, you know, we, we do our best with it, but we're obviously not that good. Um, I hope that Nintendo can get better at forecasting in the future, uh, because they have the money. This isn't a money issue. This isn't a, oh, what was me? We're, we're beholden to like, we have to, we can't afford to overproduce or we can't afford this. Can't, like none of that's an issue at Nintendo. Um, they just need to get people to do better market forecasting. Because to a lot of us, it seems obvious, right? It seemed obvious to us what the high demand was for the NES Classic and the SNES Classic. But maybe to Nintendo, the the demand didn't seem that obvious. So maybe they need to bring in uh, some outside people, right? Sometimes you get people that are so ingrained in their jobs and uh, you know exploring the marketplace and working on PR. Like, I mean, think about it. Doug Bowser is, is the senior VP of sales and marketing, marketing being a big part of that. So he's going to be at an event like, uh, like the Nintendo World Championships. And when you start doing that kind of stuff, it can kind of take you away from a job of examining the marketplace and, and doing sales projections. So, yeah, I think that Nintendo might just need to bring in some outside help for that. Uh, what, maybe they need to bring in people, even from the video game media, uh, that have covered this stuff for a while and ha are more in tune with consumers and what consumers want. Because uh, I think you get enough business heads together and you sometimes lose traction with what the base consumers are actually thinking. So if you can get someone who has a connection to those consumers, uh, like someone in the media, and uh, get them involved in projecting, that might help. You know, they could be like, hey, look, I, you know, it's not a simple process, but, you know, for Switch at launch, the demand's pretty high. You should probably have like 5 million units ready to go. Uh, and if they did that, they probably would have sold all 5 million during that first month, which would have been like the, the highest, that would have been like a record-breaking month of sales for a system. But yeah, anyways, you guys let me know what you think about what Doug Bowser had to say in the comments below. And the whole situation with Nintendo stock, you know, do you think like me, they're just bad at forecasting and anticipating demand, despite the fact that they try their best? Um, and do you understand that when they do miss on their forecasts and their stuff, that it does take a while to catch up? It's not as simple as flipping a switch and suddenly it's available. 
Um, let me know in the comments below. Enter that Super Mario Odyssey giveaway if you so feel like it. Otherwise, folks, I am Nathaniel Ruffeljance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more videos just like this one. And I will see you guys in the next one.